Speak today is the digital explosive technology in the fourth industrial revolution in Africa, African context. Um, is it a threat or opportunity for solving globally the economic, environmental, social, and political problems? Now, our, our facilitator for today is Professor Mamo Much uh, from the DST um, NRF Search Chair in the Swan University of Technology. And the brief bi biograph of, of Professor Much is that he founded the African Journal on Science, Technology, Innovation, and Development in 2008, and serves as its editor-in-chief. And now, ever since, uh, he has been given Best Institutional Senior Researcher of the Year Merit and Academic Excellence Award. Professor Mucci's scholarly contribution to the discipline of innovation has been uh, strengthening and contextualizing the theoretical framework of the national innovation systems as applied to the African context. Now, the principles and the theory of the national innovation system as it is practiced in the developed and industrial economies could not be applied directly to the developing or underdeveloped and largely agrarian economies of the African continent. Uh, Professor Mitch also took up the mammoth task of producing an impressive body of research on the innovation systems uh, in whatever rudimentary forms or degrees of evolutionary state uh, they exist. Now, in various, um, he, he also taught over 400 doctoral candidates in doctoral academic, in doctoral academies across the world. That is in the Global Leaks, Africa Leaks, Saika Leaks, in India Leaks networks. He has taken major initiatives for running doctoral and master's academy in various universities in Africa and all over the world. The professor, um, one such academy is recently organized by the Association of Commonwealth Universities. Also, he has been invited for many keynote addresses and lectures in Africa and, world, and, uh, and worldwide. He is the founder of the Africa Postgraduate Academy that has been training masters and doctoral students drawn from different disciplinary backgrounds, applying the unit of knowledge approach to upgrading quali uh, quality supervision. He has published over 400 papers, uh, book chapters, articles, and he has given over 100. Hello, again, keynotes. it went back again. So, uh, biography, I'd like to uh, give the floor to Fatin uh, to proceed. Yeah, thank you so much, Anthony, for this bright presentation about the event you met. And hello, everyone. I'm really glad to see you again. And welcome to the webinar series on sustainable development in Africa, shaping the future of the continent. So, hello, uh, uh, our beloved sister, uh, Dr. Fetten, uh, she, she and I know each other for a long time, and we joined with this uh, academy, the Global X Academy. So, these academies we do. And uh, I know she's going to do a lot of good work for um, Africa. So, and we both uh, have this uh, deep uh, commitment and uh, value to make Africa tall in this world. And now we have a, a new technology uh, that is quite extraordinary. And we're wondering whether this technology can be a liability or a blessing for Africa. So I really must thank all of you, uh, the team, Brian and all of you, uh, for uh, uh, undertaking this webinar. And I think the more we develop this interaction and communication, the better for, for us to know each other and work with each other, trust each other, and, and I'm pretty sure that something positive will come out of this kind of communication. So I really congratulate you and appreciate you for undertaking this. And I'm humbled by your invitation and the way you are spreading the, the information across the world. It's very, very good. Now, let me just be brief and, uh, and just tell you what I think is very, very important uh, uh, on this technology. 
I really think we are now in this digital technology, in the period of uh, what they call explosive technology. Uh, and I have given you, I don't want to go through the, the what I, I wrote in the, in the PowerPoint I sent you, since you, you could all read that one. But let me just make a few reflections about what this technology means and whether we are at the moment benefiting from it or would it also produce danger and risk to us. Is this technology an opportunity for us or is this technology a danger to us? And that is a serious question we need to ask and raise because so far the technology is spreading in Africa, but who controls it, how it's done, uh, is not really clear. Because, as you know, we still have challenges. Like our own money, we have huge amount of resources in Africa, huge amount of resources flow out of Africa uh, with what's called illicit financial flows. In the same way, our knowledge also has not been uh, well uh, protected and even the new technology we generate may not also be uh, very well protected. So because we have these challenges, we need to find now a way to actually manage very strongly how this explosive exponential technology that is now, it's called the digital technology, the fourth industrial revolution, the internet of things, blockchain, all these things that are changing very much how every aspect of our existence, our economic relationships, our environmental relationships, our political relationships, all of them are now being affected, our social relationships are being affected. So the interesting question now is how do we deal with this technology is very, very important. So let me maybe go uh, um, uh, a bit maybe to uh, describe some of this with the, the, you know, like what's important now is uh, Africa needs uh, to engage in what I, I call the, in this marathon race of uh, the, of this marathon race of the digital time. All right, uh, as we say, technology advances at the exponential rates and human institutions and societies do not change as fast as the technology. There's that a gap between technology and society. Imagine now a robot capable of treating Ebola patients or cleaning uh, nuclear waste. So you can see that what people used to do, technologies can do. So we now are in a very interesting time. So let's see how we can transform this time. Now, the interesting question now is, the fourth industrial revolution has impact on Africa. It's time for Africa to join the transformational technology era, computational systems, networks and sensors, artificial intelligence, robotics, biotechnology, synthetic biology, bioinformatics, 3D printing, human machine interface, biomedical engineering, and regenerative medicine, more computing power, speed, sensing, communication, conversation with machines and new interhuman relationships and tolerance is upon us now. So Africa needs to engage and win the marathon race on this digital time. This digital technology, we need to manage it. If we don't manage it, it will be danger to us. Time to perform, transform, change and reform Africa now with digital technology. Apply intelligently now this digital technology to make integrated, united, smart, green, innovative, and social entrepreneurial Africa. We need to create what we call the social entrepreneurship of hope. We need social innovation also. That can only be also supported with, we could, we could redesign it, re-engineer it, rework it with the uh, digital technology by managing this digital technology properly. 
So need to transform digital technology into social digital technology, where mere com not just mere commercial success is changed. Because before, everything is validated by commerce and profit, by market validation. We need to actually now be more inclusive and add social validation, environmental validation, knowledge validation, and also some of the values like the tolerance, some of the, the values that we have, some of the changes, even the traditional values, the knowledge and everything that we have in our own cultures, we need to use this digital technology and upgrade them. What don't we have? We have created many, many knowledge, many uh, very, very good spiritual and many, many interesting uh, the, the, the technologies also in the indigenous knowledge arena. We need also to link this indigenous knowledge with the digital time, with this expo exponential technology and explosive technology and, get, and bring about very interesting uh, changes that we need to, to do. As I said, we need to make economic validation uh, and it's not good to just uh, do economic validation by market, but also we should add all these other things, as I said. We have, as you know, so many now new things that are happening. We have the African Union Agenda 2063. We have the United Nations SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals 2030. We have the Africa Union Science Technology Innovation Strategy for Africa. We have, we need now, we need now to also see how we can create sustainable development, as you rightly put it in your uh, webinar's title, how to use science, technology, innovation to generate sustainable development for Africa. The, how do we bring about the African sustainable development? And how do we address, uh, use digital technology to address these priorities, the priorities that are set up by the SDGs, by STITSA 2024, by uh, the African Union 2063, how do we actually again integrate this technology to make sure that it delivers, it helps us deliver all these uh, uh, problems. So we need now, the most important thing now is let Afri Africa must join the, dig the digital age by doing the things that have never been done before. Now Africa is involved, I mean you have M-Pesa in Kenya, many things like that, that now even if people do not know how to read and write, they can use technology, mobile miracle is happening, many interesting things are happening. We have internet penetration is growing, uh, even Africa has its own AFRINIC, African Center headquartered in uh, Mauritius, many things we have that are uh, being developed. So these developments that are happening even in the global mobility Engagement Index Africa is rising and uh, the Internet of Things are developing. Many, many interesting things are happening. We have now a time where humans are acting like machines. Machine, machine interaction is happening. We're all now all linked up to the mobile phone, <laughs> mostly where we access many things. Can you imagine uh, today there is an examination in Ethiopia. You know what happened? The, the, because of the mobile phone, they had to delink all the Wi-Fi so that the students could not do all, keep all the answers and uh, copy it. So, <laughs> so they had to remove internet when they do the examination. Things like that is happening now. So we are in a very interesting time. So we do need uh, to do that. The most, uh, most important thing, another thing, important thing is, in the global value chain, Africa still is in the stage of raw material, agriculture, and mineral stage. So the interesting question now is how do we also integrate this exponential technology, digital technology, to actually add value to these resources we have so that we do not just sell raw materials, we actually add value to them and we actually in turn into the digital time and the knowledge economy we do not stay stay at the first stage of the, industri the industrial revolution. We actually reach the fourth industrial revolution by making sure that the digital technology actually actually promotes that for us. Something like that is very very important to do. So I think this is quite important. Time to use digital to solve African problems now. The delayed unity of Africa can be fast tracked digitally. We can also integrate African economy. 
we can create a renaissance Africa. We could remove also a lot of this divide and rule by making better communication rather than sending uh, strange communications through by using the me social media. We can promote African spirituality, philosophy, history, culture, knowledge and struggle. And, and, and also promote the wisdom of the people that Africa has and that's what we should do. I think uh, we, we do have also artificial intelligence and that is making really machines to think like humans, to act and communicate. So, uh, and this new generation of inter artificial intelligence is also uh, changing very much and we need to actually then power actually, actually again social change and the well-being of our people actually have to change very much uh, with this technology. So I think when we have technological advancement with the control of machines, it's not easy also to predict it. So we have also this blockchain and many things like that that are actually affecting the future. Now we have a serious challenge. Some of the things that we used to do can now be done technologically. If they do, if it's done well, it means it could be positive. But if it's not done well, it can also create negativity. So, for example, in blockchain, you can do, you can store identity details of people, verification of identity, ownership records you could have, blockchain wallet, digital assets, smart contracts, digital contracts, you can have all these things. Blockchain can also replace lawyers and bankers by undertaking legal and financial transactions. It can also help voting. It can also help us for conflict resolution. You know, when we have problems in areas of the world, I've, I've been asked to come to uh, South Sudan. There's a, the, on STI and technology, they want me to d discuss. And I'm thinking about how can we promote digital voting, clean up stealing and voting, deal with vote tampering digitally. All these things we need to deal with. We can also design it, put it in a very interesting way. We can also really uh, be positive, promote health, can make better travel arrangements, prevent illicit financial flows, many things like that we could do. We can even help urban cities, you know, better, better uh, smart cities we could develop. We could do many things like that. Um, smart girls, smart urban farms, food security, healthcare, tourism. We can even create an e-economy, e-agriculture, and managing management can be facilitated, services can be done, we can create a digital edge with big data, digital transfers, knowledge economy value chain could be created from our, instead of remaining at, a, at the primary stage, we can come to the fourth industrial revolution and make Africa reach that stage fast. We can shift many things like mobile uh, and cloud computing, scientific business machine learning, to advance science and engineering, new business models we can create. I mean, this is a time of big data. It's a very interesting time. So the physical universe, the physical space we have, the physical world can also change into the digital world with e-education. Now we are teaching. Some of us are now doing online courses. You know, uh, Coursera, many things are happening. So very, very interesting things are happening. Many universities are now doing all this teaching. Now you are doing webinar too. Look. This is also part of the digital technology. We can create e-health, e-government. Government can also be, instead of uh, human government, people living humanly with all their mistakes, if we de design it very well with e, we may make less mistakes, less bureaucracy, and any of this. And agriculture, in many of our African countries, over 70% of our people are in the rural areas. If we really develop this technology, we can transform agriculture. We can also create even a whole new knowledge arena where we can create what I call citizen science. So, so we could have real good data, digital data, findable data, accurate data, and interoperable data, reusable data. We can develop with this new technology. So I think it's very, very interesting, especially on agriculture. We can use it with this technology we can do better weather prediction, soil monitoring, irrigation automation, crop monitoring, harvesting, pest disease and weed prediction. Farmers can use drones and cameras attached to farming machinery to capture, capture data, any data they need, and they can do many things. Again, on SDGs, since you are, your topic is more 
on science, technology, innovation for sustainable development for Africa. I think if we use it properly, we can achieve Africa's SDGs by the year 2030. We could end poverty, we could end hunger, we can create also gender equality, we can create decent work and economic development, we can reduce inequality, we can create youth employment, full employment, and apply digital technology to bring African solutions to African problems. We can actually, and instead of using politics to solve it, we could use our technology to control our policy, politics so that we can address our problems and we can solve it. So, most interesting thing is, with this technology, let me just tell you the positive opportunities. Explosive technology for alternative energy. We can clean energy, solar energy, many things we can attract. And we can make the Sahara green, we can attract solar energy from the Sahara too. And make electricity free for all of Africa. For agriculture, water treatment, clean water, disease diagnosis and screening, drug delivery, food security, process and storage construction, health, pest detection control, air pollution remediation, all these, these technologies, the different technologies on this explosive time could actually help us. But at the same time, there are dangers. This technology is not innocent. It can also bring dangers. Cyber crime, digital gangsters can come. So, I mean, the media, as you notice, the social media, there's so many things can happen, the wrong things. Even soldier enhancement, they use, the, in America, they have the Institute for Soldier te Nanotechnology at the MIT. As you know, America is a military industrial complex. It's not a human uh, industrial complex. So they, they rely on the military. So they try to use these new technologies for also te for developing more military. Surveillance capacity through digital sensors also. Chemical weapons can be developed. Erosion of civil liberties can come. You exasperate the primary export economy of the South also. It can also, if we do not control it well, the, this technology can also be negative to us in the global value chain because we are still trying to transform agriculture, minerals, and raw materials. And, and of course, if we don't know how to regulate it we, very well, this technology, it can also create more problems for us. I think to just end this uh, conversation with you, I like to say there is a need for active engagement by promoting the public oversight of the explosive technology to create opportunities and not dangers to Africa. How do we create serious positive opportunities and make Africa move from at a lower level of industrialization to the fourth industrial revolution? How could we do that to the knowledge economy, how we could do that? The technologies exist. They can be accessible. How do we work together to make sure that we can actually apply it is the most interesting thing. This webinar you have uh, done is excellent. And I really am proud of you for doing it. And I hope you can continue this webinar and really spread it more to realize some of these things we just mentioned, how we can actually translate them into practice by, by using all kinds of schemes, including laboratories, many things, experiments, cases, and monitoring and evaluation, many things like that. So to, to realize opportunities for stall to have, or avoid dangers to build innovative, smart, green, and integrated Africa that all of us should have, a united Africa, renaissance Africa, and I hope that happens soon, and I hope you all work hard, and you are younger than us. I think we should be there to support you, but you should lead it. So you should be good leaders and deliver very good things. I'm Asagunala Santesana. Shukran and thank you. Thank you, Professor Muchi, for the bright presentation. And also, uh, I'm sorry for the student and for the attendee for the challenging network, but I'm glad that, Hello. Uh, that we Hello. have done it and everything. We, we finished the presentation and, and uh, Patan was just uh, giving a uh, uh, speech that is for thanking you on uh, that uh, wonderful presentation. The question now is that uh, the interactive session might be a, a little bit challenging. And therefore, the students have opted to. The questions are being asked uh, in that part, in that zone, in the screen. There is a section for chatting, so there are several questions that are being asked there. So uh, there are two ways: either you can uh, read them and then uh, answer, or I can read you them, and then uh, you can.
okay. like each, each of them, yeah. So it's over and it's easy for you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So, so you you want me? Should I just listen to the the questions you ask and then I will respond? Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I just saw a question, Cop Leader. We can hear you, Prof. Cop Leader, how does Africa Agenda to elaborate on the way to reach the fourth industrial revolution? Do you want me to answer that question? Yes, yes, those ones. Yeah, you can answer them one for okay. another. Okay. Tell, tell, tell me, when I answer the question, tell me, you can call me, if you don't hear me, please call me, okay? Yeah, we can hear you clearly, so there's no problem, we can hear you very well, yeah, so just okay. go Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, can I answer the question? Yes, yes. The question, how does Africa Agenda 2063 elaborate on the way to reach the fourth industry? industrial revolution this is very interesting uh, question from what i read now it's quite a few years since i read it there isn't much link between the fourth industrial revolution and the africa uh, agenda to 2063 what we should do is link it we are we ourselves like in uh, like your webinar now you should think of Look at Agenda uh, 2063 and see how the fourth industrial revolution, what I just mentioned today, the knowledge, making Africa the knowledge economy, the integrated, smart, innovative, entrepreneurial Africa, how do we bring that about and how do we transform the value chain from the raw material, agriculture, and mineral to the knowledge economy, the digital time, and this explosive technology that I mentioned to you. That discussion from what I remember from what I discussed, recently I haven't looked at the 2063, but I've read it before. From what I read, I didn't see it. So I think we should seriously uh, uh, re-look at it. The other important thing is we shouldn't wait to unite Africa uh, another 50 years from, uh, you know, the, this was decided 50 years when the 50 years of uh, the Organization of African Unity. I think we, given the technology I described, we should work very hard to actually make the linkages faster so that we do not have to wait until 2063. We could do it faster if we apply the technology properly. I think we should do that. That's my answer for this question. Okay, thank, thank you very much for that question. And uh, uh, I think uh, if they, they have any other questions, they will type. And uh, we can just give them uh, a bit of uh, two or three minutes, and then uh, <coughs> Father can, uh, can give us a vote of thanks and uh, give us the next steps after this. Should, should I wait a bit or should? So, should I wait a bit or...? Yes, uh, well, you can wait a bit, so in case there is an, any other question, then uh, if there is none, then uh, we can uh, just close and... Uh, we really appreciate the presentation was quite, uh, quite wonderful, informative, and uh, very interactive, and uh, we've learned uh, uh, one or two things from that, and especially on the linkages, the work we should do, especially with the Agenda 2063, the African Union Agenda 2063, what now we should do, and I believe that uh, as uh, researchers and people in the, <coughs> in the academic uh, institutions, we are the ones who come up with, come up with this kind of uh, research topics and research uh, areas that, how do we do that linkage so that these things can no, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I think you are, what you have yeah. done is excellent. I hope more people uh, can join you so you can, you can spread. <laughs> so, so, if there are questions, okay, exactly. you know, are you so, going to uh, ask it in uh, my writing or are you going to... Uh, my voice is very difficult sometimes to hear. 
Okay. Yeah, by writing, by writing. Questions, then uh, we will just decide that okay. since you okay. when, when you think I should go, you call me and tell me. Okay? Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Okay. So, Fatan, uh, maybe you, you, can, you can continue in case there is uh, any other question. I think he'll respond to it uh, in the course of time. Okay. So, thank you so much, Brian, and thank you for being very, very patient today. Okay. Sure. Thank you also to sure. Professor Mamu okay. for the sure. brain presentation. Do you want me to answer the question? Even if it is what, like, kind of challenging to have a like that way, but I really appreciate it. says it seems that the biggest percentage of African states are still categorized as middle income and still developing. How possible can we join and win the marathon race? This is a very interesting question. Let me just take uh, two countries in Africa, Rwanda and, uh, and Kenya. I know also in uh, Northern Africa, we have uh, Tunisia, also Morocco and others have also some very interesting dynamics. But let me take these two countries. For example, both Rwanda and Kenya are now using uh, mobile uh, technology. In fact, they say, I don't know how true it is, but they say, Kenyans use more mobile technology than in even the United States. The people of the United States, they say. How true that is, I don't know, but I read something like that. But also the, the, the Rwandan government wants to use uh, what's called a cashless economy. In other words, they want to use digital technology to actually do what I just said earlier, you know, removing banks and lawyers kind of thing. So to do that. So what it means is, what it means is for us, what we need to do is we need to be open to this technology. We need to apply it in every sphere of our activities and add value through this technology to our existing, all existing resources we have, including our knowledge resources, any, every, every aspect, including the traditional things we have in the rural areas and so on and try to transform our people. The way they think, the way they value things, the way they work, can change. Now, if we start doing that, we can make a marathon race kind of uh, 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 journey to make it easier to transform the industrialization process. We can actually do it. We, can, we don't have to catch up. We can leapfrog. We can go beyond catch up. We can actually do it. The technology potentially has that tech, that uh, possibility. Our application of it may not be able to to do it, but we need to learn how to do it. We need to also organize our research, our uh, activities, set up our all our institutions, the universities, the industries, also to work together. The like uh, the stakeholders all have to come. And if we could do it, and if we are united also as Africans, I mean, our resources will be so rich, so we can apply. We can do even experimentations. So I think uh, the chance exists very, very much if we really want to transform Africa. The examples I just mentioned, the two play, uh, countries, are good enough for us to, to actually learn what they are doing and see if we could also apply it also into in, in other places, in other countries. So let's think about that very carefully. I know it, many things are happening in different countries, but serious research and evaluation needs to be done so that we can also draw lessons from each other so that we can actually also make exemplary uh, kind of uh, connections with each other. I think that would be what we should do. Uh, I think the, end, the other important thing you asked me uh, in uh, which areas of the fourth industrial revolution could br could Africa bring in adaptive innovations? Very, very interesting. I mean, as I said 
I mentioned many, many areas. The main thing, to be honest with you, that we should all aim at are two, two things. One, agriculture. We need to transform Africa's agriculture entirely. And we need to create an agricultural innovation system with the integration of this new explosive technology and how our agrarian population can actually be able to adapt it and apply it, use it, and, and change the lives of the rural population. This is serious. I think on that we should do it. When we do that, we, the entire agri agrarian uh, zone has water, many, many of this, uh, you know, the, all the demographics, including the climate, many things are uh, there. So if we handle it very well, we, that also handles also the demographics, the population is growing. In the rural areas, pe people do. All these things have to be managed properly, and the innovation in that area is the most critical. And I think it's something that we all need to apply. The second most important uh, adaptable innovation that we need to apply is to make sure our youth should not become unemployable, should not be going to universities or schools, adapt, get, and, and then get out of, and then don't, don't get jobs. We need to make them job creators and not job seekers. We need to make them tech startup creators, innovation creators, and so on. So our youth is critical. So we need to create the youth to be fully employed, to be fully engaged, to participate and join in the entire system of education. That we need to do that. I think if we do these two, two many, these are the two critical ones I, I can see. Our youth and the transformation of the rural population will be, and of course in the urban areas, the majority of the people, the, the, the majority do not live in the, rural, in, the, in the urban areas. But we need to manage the urban areas is to just manage them to be morally intelligent and emotionally intelligent and, and also not create lots of other problems for others. So we need to manage them very well in the urban areas. If we do that, I think we will transform Africa. And it doesn't have to be a marathon race to reach the, the developed world, but it, it could be ourselves, our own identity. We can create a new, a new relationship a new uh, approach where we are integrated, innovative, entrepreneurial, creative, and so on. So we could do that, and green and smart. We could do this, and it's possible to do it. Thank you. Thank you very much for that wonderful uh, response to those, those questions. And uh, we really appreciate uh, <coughs> the, the knowledge and information you've given us. So I think uh, that is all the questions we have. So for now, uh, we just... Uh, close off from our side and uh, we can uh, <laughs> let you let you go and uh, do other business let me yeah. let me thank you let me thank you, uh, thank you me thank Brian. all of you yeah and uh, let me uh, say little, let me say a little poem poem for you to make you to make you to make you go very well. They say it is easy to sing when the streets themselves are alive with singing, when the drum beats, the rhythm in us all. It is easy enough to speak the words that move when the crowd is aroused and wants what you wish it to prove. What is not so easy is to start from the dark, not knowing what to spark. For the real work is the work that no one sees and earns no remark. Don't go for remark, go for work <laughs> and change Africa. So thank you so much, all of you, and uh, my dear Patan, also so nice to see you. And I hope we'll keep in touch and we'll do very good things to make Africa unite very fast. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Keep strong. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you so much. Yeah.